comic collecting has become stamp collecting. When did the gimmicks end? Originally three ninety nine. Yeah. Become forty thousand dollars. This is the industry. Hey, I'm Will. And I'm Steve. And today we're talking about variants on back of the box. And this is going to be quite controversial. Boom. We can all agree that right now the whole industry is basically standing on the shoulders of variants. Yeah, basically. Uh, it's been that way for a long time, actually, I feel like. We had a nice run in the mid-2000s where variants were kind of scarce. I feel like they weren't doing a lot of them. Like, you, they were actually... You would have to be, oh, is there a variant for that book? Well, now you just know that there's a variant for every book that comes out. Basically, it doesn't matter if the book's like a throwaway book or not, they're going to do a variant for it. They might do a, like a one in, t you know, the only 10 of them were made and the book, you know, only, you know, the regular copy's not even selling. But the variant, even if it's a throwaway book, they want that variant. And that's the kind of stuff that I'm seeing everywhere right now. It doesn't matter if the book, in, if the book sold of its own merits or just because it was a great story. It doesn't matter. It's just if that variant is wanted, they're going to get the book regardless of what's inside that book. That's crazy to me. A little bit, you know. Well, with the uh, insatiable appetite for all these variants, every single comic company, their marketing teams, are basically pushing their whole publishing agenda basically around variants. So how does that work? So that's why we're getting reboots. Okay, so you get a series that starts off at issue one and it'll have 50 different variants ranging from, you know, one in five, one in 10, one in 50, one in 100, one in 500. One in a thousand, one in 5,000. One in 5,000. To put that into perspective, if you're a comic shop or a dealer of any kind and you want one of those issues, you have to order 5,000 of one comic book. So, if it was Spawn 300 and there's a one in 5,000, you have to, what are you going to do with 5,000? So is the, is it worth it? Do you, do you order 5,000 copies of a book to get this variant? Because I've seen these one in 5,000 variants or whatever, one in 500 variants. And for the scarcity of them, some of them don't hold value at all. You know what I mean? You'll see a one in 500 variant selling for a hundred bucks, which to me, that's, that seems like pennies compared to what it should be worth if the, the scarcity is there. If you're not on it right away, if you don't buy it that day with, when, it's, when it's first out and you don't sell it right away, you're probably not going to make your money on a lot of those variants because it's, it's the now, now, now mentality. Like, I need it right now be, you know, before everybody else gets it so that I can say, I have this variant. I have it. See? I have this, this new variant. That's and because the publishers are very clever because they are appealing to the one thing that uh, comic collectors have had for a long time, okay, which is the need to collect everything yeah, you're okay completest. we're all completists this market, this market will kill you so <laughs> the uh the publishers are very clever and they're fully aware of that so issue one comes out and it has the 50 variants and that's not but, an exaggeration which is no crazy. it is not exaggeration because and then they get to issue 25 and then they cancel the series and begin at number one again with another series of 50 variants right. but the thing is marvel themselves as a publisher will, will maybe release 15 variants themselves and then you have every comic book company out there that can release a cover, will release a cover with an artist. So beyond just the straight Marvel variants, you're also getting all these ancillary variants from all these comic companies that are just, you know, they've got, you know, big artists that are exclusive to them. So you, as, right away, like Thor number one comes out, you're going to go, okay, well, I have to go to the comic book store. I have to get the, the regular issue number one. But first, let me go to the variants and buy the 15 variants that Marvel put out. And then I have to go online before I get home and make sure that I don't sell out of all the other variants that came out from all the other stores. Although they're probably pre-sold so you can pre-order them beforehand and make sure that you get yours. So essentially, they're making money off of Thor number one 50 times. Yes. From each person. Now, you're crazy. probably wondering why do they have to do that? Okay? And this is where we're going to get in controversial territory. The reason they have to do that is because readership is down. The actual story content is down. That means that there's far less people actually reading. Okay, so all the publishers realize that if they are not appealing to this wide audience of readers who are following characters and storylines, they have to appeal to people who are flipping, speculating, buying. Okay, that market is thriving. It is massive. It's actually going to uh, require you know the price guide to completely reorganize itself because of the variance. 
But is that a good thing? We're not going to know that for a while. It's sort of similar to what happened in the uh, um, early 1990s when we had all these books that were supposed to be hot and this speculative boom took place. I mean, Marvel was feeding into that by producing a million copies of the book, though. So yes, you know but every single company, company, you know, those of you who survived that speculator war, you know, who grew up with the Valiants and the Images and the Marvels and even the DCs, you know, the death of Superman. Me and Will, we've been through this before. We actually have those scars. You know, my old comic shop actually sank because of the old speculator uh, Superman. mess. Superman 75 killed a lot of people. Yes, <laughs> yeah, not only did Superman die, but, you know, a yeah. couple of years later on, the entire industry fell. So, here we are in, you know, 2022, and the industry is being propped up, in my opinion, by the variant market. I so, know. that's why you're going to see 50 or 100 variants, 150 variants, 200 variants. Why? Because there's not enough single individuals buying comics anymore. So, you have to get the same person to buy 20 50 or 100 copies of the same book to keep the industry and to keep the stores alive. Right. Okay, that's just I think the bottom line. I I agree because there is their stories just aren't there anymore. Like if you if I talk to anybody right now at a convention, I, what are you reading? Most of them aren't going to. Well, you know I haven't really read comics in a while. That's for most of the people that I talk to. I'm not really reading anything new, but I'm collecting still. And what they're doing is they're just collecting. Very, I don't even you know I, I honestly don't read many comics anymore either because I don't like any of the stories that are out really right now. I'm not, I, I can't even get into a DC comic. And that's very telling because you've yeah. read millions I've of read issues. Everything. I can't get into a DC comic now because I don't even know where to start. And Marvel is just a, like an alien world to me now. I don't even understand what's happening. So I don't really buy a lot of new comic books because I don't, I don't, I'm not a variant hound, so I don't go after all the variants. But I know a lot of people that are just buying the books just to have them. They don't read them because they're just buying covers. You know? so, but we are but, also, I would say, we're in the era of the artist, okay? For you sure. have an artist like J. Scott Campbell that can do a variant and he can move 5,000 books, boom, like this. No writer working today can do that. So right now, it's all these different variants and different artists. And by the way, I am not taking away the skill level of these artists. They sure. can do fantastic, beautiful covers. covers. <laughs> However, the era of the artist is back again. We've, we had this during the... Um, the speculator boom of the 1990s, right, the 90s with especially with the right. image crew doing all their covers and stuff like that. We're back there again, okay? So someone will say to you, oh, that new, that new issue's coming out, the number one. I want, I want the Campbell variant, and right. I want it. And you or know I what? want five different versions of the Campbell variant. Five, yes. Five I have different. to have the virgin, and I have yes. to have the trade dress, and I have to have the black and white, and I have to have, you know, the, the lenticular, yes. and I have to have the... the what the foil cover there's you know there's everything yes oh, and even the though the, wrap cover? yeah the exploding um, book that comes out you know it, it breaks <laughs> up into small pieces and then it reforms in front there's all sorts of weird stuff that's going on right now but in in the long term in my opinion it is detrimental for the future of this business because if no one is reading the stories anymore and there might not even be stories in those books. No, there may just be, you know, just a whole page of like, you know, one panels. Yeah, okay, you so you can look. Okay, and then, you know, every now and again, you can change a panel and someone goes, oh, I want the variant of this. You know, so what we're talking about is very important because uh, there are still thousands of comic shops around this country. And of course, you know, around the world that are relying on these companies, you know, to create stories and storylines and characters like that, you know, to bring people you know, new people reading, okay? However, if you're not doing that to a certain level, you have to appeal to this other market, and that other market are people who are flippers, speculators, okay? And they're coming along and go, oh, I did, I, I got the one in 5,000 J. Scott Campbell. It's on eBay that day, okay? Oh, that sure. person doesn't give a hoot no, about what's going on in the comic, the story, or whatever. He's just making his money. They're okay. waiting at the door on Wednesday morning to get in first so they can get that book yes. and flip it within 20 minutes. Again, that's nothing new, but yeah, right now it's been just... Going on since the beginning of but right now it's like on steroids. Right. It's just well, got to had, a new like level. Like I said, we had the 90s, crazy time for you know artists and stuff, and then you had a nice time between like 99 and like 2008 or so where it was like a nice time for comics. There were a lot of great comics coming out. Yes. And it was really writer-driven at that time. Yes. There was a lot of good artists still, a lot of great artists. Great artists. But it was very writer-driven in that point in time. Um, and then that kind of went away. And now you know, you've got where we're at now, which is it's basically just a variant world. And stories, I feel like, like I said, don't matter anymore. It's really that because 
like I said, nobody I talk to reads comics anymore. Yes. So basically, in some aspects, comic collecting has become stamp collecting. Right. Yeah. You're you're literally buying covers. You're now. buying covers. Because a lot of people don't even they don't want to open them because they don't want to ruin the book. They want to get that nine eight. They want to get the nine yeah. nine. They want to be able to resell it at the highest value. Yes. They can. So opening the book is just going to damage. And the in book. the old days, the publishers publishers would just say, "Well, just buy two copies so you can read right. the story." And now books are five dollars. But now everyone's like, "Yeah, you know, I don't I don't need to read the story because there's another variant that I want to get." There's definitely uh, trouble in, uh, on the horizon, I think, in some aspects. You know, again, this in uh, our industry has gone through so many twists and turns. We're right here, right now. You know, we're still waiting for someone to come along, you know, and really shake things up and do some good stories. Okay, um, the, when's that coming? I don't know. I don't know if I mean because there's there's still too many gimmicks to be found. I mean, we have, I have in my office right now. I have a Kevlar comic book variant. I have a glass comic book variant. I have metal comic book variants. I have the lenticular comic book variants. We have, there's like, it's the, the, any gimmick that they can come out with. They have the, the stained glass ones now. You know, the, the guy, they have that guy that actually makes stained glass pieces and then uses them for variants, which, I mean, that's commendable. That's a lot of art. That's a lot of work, I think. When do the gimmicks end? Yeah. You know, when do the, when the glow in the dark? Yeah. Negative. There's so many gimmicks that they've done. Uh, but it wasn't that long ago that we had some big stories that were driving, you know, especially, uh, you know, I remember a couple of years ago over at DC, you know, um, huge stories coming out of Green Lantern, Jeff Johns, always doing great stuff. Mm -hmm. And now no one's talking about stories. OK, everyone's like, well, waiting for the next appearance of a character on TV. OK, that really is. they're waiting for their, ca you know, they wait, they search their, 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 at their at their computer. As soon as they find out a certain character has been optioned, they go and buy the book, and then they try and find a new different variant. And sometimes that leads to extraordinarily expensive books, including like the, the third print Kamala Khan book. I mean, that is an amazing expensive book. Well, like Ultimate Fallout 4 variant. It's a 1 in 25 variant. 1 in 25 doesn't seem like a crazy amount. You know, you only have to order 25 copies. But at the time, it was an Ultimate book, and nobody was buying Ultimate books, so if you even ordered 10 copies for the book, you weren't getting it, you know, but that variant now, $40,000 plus in a 9.8, which is, and that's, I mean, the book came out in 2008 or so, right, 2008? Yeah, so and just think about it, $40,000. $40, $40,000 in You could pick yourself up an X-Men 1, you could pick up an Avengers 1, right. yeah, you could even pick up a, a nice uh, a Fantastic Four 1 for that book. But in 14 years, that book accumulated that much value. Yes. That's, in, that's insane. Yes. That's a so, lot of value in 14 years to have a book that was originally three ninety nine. Yeah. become $40,000 in that yes. small amount of time. Now, when you get books like that reaching values like that, that means that we have to start really tracking, finding out who, what, why, and when. Okay? And that's what the, the industry is going through right now. And some of the, uh, the price guides, they're going to be actually working on this stuff. So it's going to get bigger and bigger. We're going to, a lot more stuff is going to be identified because right now, this is the industry. Right, and to your point about the price guides, there is no price guide out there that, that actively tracks variants like that. So yes. you can't go on Overstreet and find all of your variants in there. They just don't have it. And there yes. is no Wizard magazine anymore that's, yeah. that's you know, highlighting variants. You do have like a uh, key collector app that kind of shows you. They're, I guess they're kind of like the new Wizard if you were going to have yes. something like that. But um, there's no real way besides looking yes. what they're selling for to try to find value on these things. Yes. You know, it's not like before when you could just pick up a wizard, like I said, or, or an overstreet yeah. and kind of get a uh, yes. roundabout. It Although like there that. are changes yeah, there's stuff because coming. there is going to be some stuff happening and they are going to start tracking this stuff. And I know that personally, uh, we are going to be really working on it. And so pretty sure, pretty soon, you know, for those people who are interested in putting these variants together, <laughs> I tip my hat to you. If you are going to put together the 25 million variants out there, they are going to start being tracked. And the real value of these items, and some of them are incredible. Okay, graph. I personally sold a, a variant of Amazing Spider-Man a couple of years ago for $16,000. 16000 Like that. This is a real part of the industry right now. So uh, I don't think it's going to go anywhere, honestly. I think it's just going to keep continue to build and build on variants because there hasn't been any slowdown in the trend in the last you know, 10 years even. I feel like the last 10 years it's just been getting more and more and more variants. Like I said, when, when you can pick up Squirrel Girl number 14 and there's 12 variants for it, there's something going on. Mm. <laughs> yes, well, we won't get too much into Squirrel Girl. Not with Steve. <laughs> <laughs>
I don't think we're going to see any change uh, coming up. No. Uh, there are certain factors that might put some pressure on it. But right now, that's the industry, and that's what we have to deal with today. That's what we think about variants. Let us know what you think about variants by commenting below, clicking, liking, following, all the stuff. Uh, and we'll see you next time in Back of the Box. Bye.